What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi Fruit Loop. What you know? I've got a Christmas hangover. <laughs> Between yeah. food and parties and whatever else. Did you guys have a good Christmas? We did. We did. Good. Busy. It was fun. Yeah, same here. We uh, we always have a big Christmas. My mom and dad still go out all out. Just it's like a bomb went off in their house after we get done. Very nice. Just a kind of a year where uh, I'm a lot more reflective. I'm I'm very sentimental anyway. This year was really sentimental. I think with my aunt being sick and almost losing her a month ago, my uncle has cancer. And then, so I just really like took the time to look around and take it all in this year and just be yeah. thankful for like this Christmas. Yeah. You know, everybody's relatively well. Yep. Uh, I cooked the whole meal. So from Turkey to everything. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I've already got my tree down. Like, Came down today. Can't stand. I, like when it's over, it's over. You know what I mean? I'm done. We're leaving ours up. Uh, no. Yeah. Y'all can do that. That's fine. Uh, not me. So one thing, uh, my daughter comes back today from a hike with her dad and she's like, Hey, me and dad decided something. And I'm like, what did y'all decide? She is going to Ireland this summer to study for three months as a high schooler. And my mama heart cannot take this, y'all. I need to be sedated all summer. She is growing up. I'm going to have to be hooked up to some kind of IV drip. So he said, well, I thought maybe you could go over the first couple of weeks and get her acquainted with the area. You guys could go sightseeing. And I, I thought, how am I going to go to the airport and leave my, she'll be 16. Well, she's, you know, she didn't turn 17 until October or August. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I got three of them. Their birthdays run together. How am I going to go to the airport and tell her goodbye for a few months? I, moms, I need tips. It's going to be tough. But okay. if she decides to go there for school, then it'll be four years. So uh, the well, little summer is not bad. <laughs> I can't do this, y'all. Okay. So I love nothing more than finding a good show to watch. And most of the time, we're just so busy with this podcast now that I don't have a lot of free time. Okay, I'm a little late to the game, like a year late. I'm four episodes into The Queen's Gambit. If you guys have not seen it, oh my goodness. It is like literally one of the best things I've ever watched. I haven't, haven't seen it. You have to watch it. It is so good. So real quick, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. It was great on the live that we did last week to hear that our listeners are going and buying these quilts. Just, I mean, she literally is the first person that took a chance on this podcast and made it to where we're able to devote more time to doing it. And so please go check her out. Look, Christmas is over. We got Valentine's Day. I know you guys have people that have birthdays coming up. We got graduations. She can do so much with not only t-shirts, but hats, jerseys, anything you can get the quilts. You can get pillows. Go check her out. Two cool, two cool t-shirt quilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis. And what can they do, Fruit Loop? They can take your t-shirts and make them into a quilt that is too cool. And I can say, I know this for a fact. Yeah. My Clemson. Clemson quilt. Okay. Now, here, so, real quick, though. The, I mean, the thing about our sponsors is when you click and you support them, they support us. So... That's very true. And we're adding some spoken ads this yeah. starting now, really not this episode, but it's just a way we can sustain what we do without charging our listeners, which is a big thing yep. for us that we, and you guys know that. So be patient. We promise it won't be full of ads, but you'll get one in the middle sometimes. And that just means that we're able to sit here and research for 12, 14 hours a day. Yeah, like we do. And thanks for all your Christmas wishes, well wishes, and all that stuff. That yeah, nice. my kids had a great Christmas. It was just so fun. It, mm -hmm. I don't care how old they get. Their faces on Christmas morning is the best ever. Yeah. My Christmas memories are my favorite, and I want that to be the same with them when they grow up, is to say Christmases were great. Yep. All right, so you had this really amazing idea for what to do this week as we close out the year. And yep. it's crazy to think that we are going into our second year doing this podcast. It's just 
blown our minds how much it's grown. We love our listeners and we, we appreciate all you guys. We have a lot of new listeners. We want to, again, remind you guys, if you're new to these cases, go to our back catalog. We have backstories on every case we talk about in depth. We kind of like to do deep dives, although we never set out for that to be what we do. It's kind of what we're known for now is doing these really deep dives that just pick everything apart. So you had an idea every day we're going to recap for the year the cases that we're covering because we have some cases that are going to trial before yeah. spring. We have the Wagner case. We have George Wagner the fourth in the Pike County Massacre. We're going to do a recap on that case this week. And uh, Letitia Stout will be going at some point. I'm not sure of the date, but I don't think it's too far into the year. Yeah. So, go so ahead. we put out some advertisements today on social media, a little video and stuff, just to look back on 2021. Yeah, because, uh, you know, the thing is, when I started doing this earlier today for Valo Daybell, which is what we're going to do today, you forget so much of little things that happen and we're not look okay we don't profess that this is going to be every major event in this case but we tried to get the important stuff and the dates may be you know a day or two off but we tried yep. so today we're going to do Valo Daybell just to recap to give you a little perspective and I always include Joe Ryan because even if she didn't physically have anything to do with his death I think she killed the man just by grieving him to death with how she treated him it's been 1364 days since Joe Ryan died 900 days since Charles Vallow's murder it's been 840 days since Tylee's murder 826 days since JJ's murder 800 days since Tammy Daybell's murder it's been 676 days since Lori was arrested and 566 days since Chad was arrested. So that didn't happen this year. But yeah. just to give you perspective, when we say the long road to justice, this it's is a long we, road. This is why we say it. And we know we're not going to trial for over a year. Yeah. So um, one of the funniest memories of this year with this case is when we slaughtered uh, Pro Hoc Vichy. Yeah, I love saying it though now. Because we said pro hoc vice. Yeah. For like two episodes. And our listeners are always so good at correcting us when we're wrong. And we love that. But like nobody told us, you guys sound like morons. Yeah. <laughs> I love saying it. Pro hoc vice. Right. Yeah. So it's hard to think, but we started this year out with no murder charges for Chad and Lori. It's, I mean, it's been that long. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So at the beginning of this year uh, was when Melanie was able to have unsupervised visitation with her kids that she shares with Brandon. And there was a motion to disqualify Rob Wood after he met with Summer Shiflet. Neither Chad or Lori were in attendance at that hearing that they had about this. If you remember, Rob Wood was in Arizona for a meet and greet, as they called it. He had been there twice before this meeting. And, um, Summer and Zulema's attorney, Garrett Smith, if you remember, he recorded the meeting and gave a copy to Mark Means. So Pryor accused Wood of acting like a witness in the case. And in the hearing about this, Pryor mentioned the rules of conduct for an attorney and says these things are taught in year one of law school. He also accused Wood of cheating, lying, and said Wood was trying to influence, coach, and intimidate a witness. Yeah, so Pryor said with Wood mentioning the death penalty, it could have been to get testimony out of Summer that would benefit the prosecution. That whole thing was a big mess uh, when all that came out. Yeah. Uh, so Pryor also accused Wood of using his position as a past elder in the church to make himself seem more valid. I never saw that. You know, I think it's kind of the easy way to go with this case being you hate to say wrapped in LDS cause they weren't LDS clearly, but it's been, you know, mentioned pretty much every time there's been something. So yeah. I think it was just an easy way to use Rob Wood's past position in the church to make it seem like he had other motives, which I think is ridiculous, but yeah. you throw a bunch of stuff to the wall and hope something sticks if you're on the defense. Yeah. And we know he's thrown a lot and continues to throw a lot. Uh, Summer wanted to testify at this hearing, I think, to say this was hoopla about nothing but 
prior objected. Mm -hmm. Uh, We thought that, remember? I remember thinking that, that they were going to call her. Yeah, because it really, she seemed like very comfortable with Rob Wood. I, I mean, you know, you're talking off the record. This is, you know, her sister. And maybe it was Rob Wood's way of, of, I mean, telling Summer, these are serious charges because at this point we didn't have murder charges. And he's letting her know we've got the evidence to probably get murder charges on her. Yeah. I think maybe that could have been part of it is to see if she could just maybe get to her sister and say, look, you need to be honest and try to save yourself. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So at one point, Pryor's own expert witness said disqualifying would maybe a bit too much. I remember that one guy they had on there. It was it was pretty comical. Um, yeah. I remember like the, the dog was barking in the background and yes. there was all kinds of stuff going on and you could see like his yeah. laundry hanging in the back and Yeah, somebody shut the door, opened the door or something, <laughs> I remember. Yeah. yeah. So Judge Boy said maybe Wood should apologize and said if Summer is to be a witness, they would need a taint hearing if she is called as a witness at trial. In the recording, Wood called Chad Wimpy. That was uh, this. I love this part. Oh, it's great. And said he looked like he could pee his pants when investigators confronted them in Hawaii. <laughs> I, I think it's, I think that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, that's an observation. That's a personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, on the ID Discovery special, we learned that Chad only made 2000 a year from his books. Uh, we learned that Lori was shipping 30 day food supplies to her family members. I remember that. Uh, Means filed a motion for Lori to have a cell phone in jail. That was pretty comical. I had forgotten all about this. And then I'm going back through our past episode notes and I'm like, whoa, I remember this. He literally is asking that she be given contraband. Yeah, crazy. (laughs) And she was only going to call him. That was what, remember? That's what it was. She was only going to call him. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Brandon, what you doing? Hey, uh, are you home? Um, sitting in my cell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you come out? No. <laughs> uh, so Brandon won his defamation lawsuit where Melanie's lawyer and made slanderous statements in the media. That was huge. That was so, I mean, you mm-hmm. want to talk about something they teach you in year one of law school. It should be like, don't tweet about your case, Mark Means. And yeah. if you're representing somebody, don't you know, just throw somebody again under the bus with a bunch of yeah, lies. If, that, lies. if you're going to do it, make sure it's true. <laughs> yeah. You would think an attorney would know that though. Yeah. I don't know. So, someone in jail with her said, Lori commented, Tylee's eyes were as blue as hers when she saw a pic on TV. Uh, Means filed a motion to have Lori referred to as Daybell and included their marriage license in the filing. I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, March 8th, a mental evaluation was ordered for Lori. I think it says something when you've had more than one mental evaluation in your life, I think. But the thing is, she always boasted about how she could work police. And she passed that mental evaluation. They let her go, I think, after about two or three hours. And she bragged yeah. about that. So good luck trying to convince somebody that, you, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, look, she's got 180 days. We're March of next year we should know more. And like we said, if they feel she's not competent, they extend that a whole year. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she's doing something to keep herself there. Yeah. Uh, March 22nd, we hear Lori's hearings have been postponed and the order was sealed. I just unseal it. Just let us look. I know we're nosy. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Chad was accidentally summoned for jury duty while he was in jail, ironically in Rob Woods County. It was for August 4th through the 10th when he was supposed to be on trial for the alteration and destruction of evidence charges. Yep. So uh, Mark Means, actually, I felt him on this tweet. He said he tweeted a copy of the jury summons with the caption, really? (laughs) It was like the one time I looked at Mark Means tweet and I was like, yep, yep, I I agree with you there, buddy. So in March, we got the body cam videos of Alex being worked on by EMS. That was the, uh, that was the, remember the beep, beep. And and I had PTSD for like a month. Yeah. It's scary. You have to death when that would come up. Now yeah. you remember when Alex died that year before it was in December, 
there was the all agency meeting where all these different agencies were coming together to talk about this case because the search was really starting to, to ramp up for JJ and Tylee. Can you imagine being a fly on the wall when they get a call? Alex is dead. Yeah. Yeah. You remember, I, it would have been, yeah. Well, if you remember on that body cam footage, a couple of the cops that responded and were in charge of kind of securing the scene and staying in the living room, they commented that certain people were at Zulema's house the night that Alex died. And it was very rare. It was obviously these people only came out for the big cases and there they were. So in April, we talked to Tom Ware, who uh, he reached out to us because he wanted to clear up some misconceptions about what was being said across social media, including me who accused him of shenanigans. And I still apologize for that because, yeah. um, you know, he was a very straightforward guy. I thought he was very trustworthy. I think he really did have Tylee's best interest at heart. Um, that's a very interesting few episodes. If you haven't heard that, go back earlier this year. Um, he pretty much told us what he knew about the case back when he was representing Lori or um, Tylee's interest in the Joe Ryan custody dispute. So also in April, we found out that the state received DNA analysis from debris found on tools that were on Chad's property. They were able to get enough for analysis. And we had some back and forth. If you remember in court about the DNA test being consumptive, meaning it would take up the whole sample. I'm going to tell you, I fall asleep watching forensic files pretty much every night. It's just my thing. I don't know. It just lulls me to sleep. And you would not believe, you know, we know they got murder charges, death penalty on the table for Chad, forthcoming for Lori when she's competent. What they find at these crime scenes, even crime scenes that are years old, and we weren't even talking that here, uh, is amazing. I was watching one last night where these three kids attacked these two boys who were fishing in a, in like a Creek or a pond. And the, the, the boys denied the suspects denied being there. Well, they found a shoe, took the shoe, did some testing on the mud that was on the bottom. And they were able to prove a single microorganism in that pond was very specific to that pond in the quantity that they found testing the water samples and the mud samples. And boom, that was it. Like they pled guilty. So I'm just saying, you know how much duct tape was used in this case that we've oh, heard yeah. of? I'm telling you guys, what they have up in Idaho, I'm ready for January of 2023. It's going to be devastating, I think, on many levels, but we're really going to see how careless they were. Yep. So also in April, we learned there was a possible blood sample from one of the apartments in Rexburg. And again, that was going to be a consumptive test. Haven't heard anything else about that. In May, we learned they had con they were going to have a grand jury. So remember, grand juries are not unanimous in their decision. It's just a majority rule. So we all thought, okay, here come the murder charges. At the end of May, Lori is declared to be broke and qualifies for a public defender. There's that whole thing about Mark Means. Is he qualified? Is he not? Melanie Gibb is served with a subpoena that they are still fighting about to this day. She was served there when she was uh, testifying for the grand jury. So May 25th, the big day murder charges were announced. Let's recap what charges they got. Hey, hold on real quick. Going back to Lori uh, being found broke. Uh, that brings up, we talked about this last episode, I think, uh, paying for her hospital stay. So that'll be interesting how that all works out. Yeah, we should try to really get specific with Idaho and see mm -hmm. what they require. But yeah. I don't know. Is she, she going to have to start like bartering her commissary to make some money yeah. to pay for that? I mean, that was one of the facilities in Idaho that, that talked about. Uh, paying oh, for okay. Well, maybe so. that's, that's crazy. That's a trip. Yeah. So Chad and Lori both got two counts of first degree murder for JJ and Tylee, two counts of cons conspiracy to commit murder. For JJ and Tylee, one count each of conspiracy to commit murder for Tammy Daybell, two counts of counts of grand theft by deception for JJ and Tylee. Chad specifically had first degree murder charges for Tammy and two counts of insurance fraud in relation to the insurance policy for her. For Lori, the additional charge she got was grand theft by social security fraud for JJ and Tylee. Chad and Lori were listed as co-defendants as well as other co-conspirators known and unknown 
Now, we haven't heard anything else about anybody being charged so far. We know the grand jury reconvened last month or this month. We haven't heard anything. I don't think it's a lost cause yet. I'm not ready to panic. I'm not ready to say they didn't come to a conclusion. Grand juries indict a ham sandwich. The burden is very, very tiny for prosecution. So I just feel like maybe there's something else coming. Maybe another grand jury. I don't know. But I'm not paying. A lot of people have said, what do you take that we haven't heard anything? I don't buy anything into it yet. Yep. Just wait. Be patient. Right. So May 27th were the first appearances for Lori and Chad for the big charges. And the continuance that day was requested for Lori. And I remember watching Scott Reich and he said he had never seen that happen. Now we know yep. Lori Hellis. What did she say? She was right on it. She called it and said she thought it was mental reasons and she couldn't assist in her case. Yep. Between that was a, Lori Hellis and Scott Reich, they make us feel smart because we read yeah, their stuff and we tell good. you guys. Yeah. We totally, yeah. but we, we give them credit. Come on. Yeah. You gotta follow Lori Hellis and Scott Reich. Like the, yeah, the they're, dynamic they're awesome. And then mm-hmm. long crime Kathy Russ and follow all those guys. Yep. So we found out that Pryor is listed as owner of Chad's house. Uh, that was, I remember that. That was, that was big. Uh, the same day is when Chandler submitted their case to Maricopa County Attorney's Office for Charles's murder. Uh, Lori, this was, uh, we all were like, dun, dun, dun. Uh, Lori is found incompetent to stand trial. Boyce halts all proceedings for Lori. I remember that. We were like, no. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I knew what was coming, though. I knew yeah. if they were doing this at a first appearance, I mean, we kind of... I. I I remember us talking. It's got to be mental. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, June 9th was the one year anniversary of when they found the bodies and was Chad's arraignment. Uh, Of course, he pled not guilty to all charges. Uh, Kay and Colby were there. And for Chad, Garth and Seth, Daybell were there. Um, I thought Emma was there. Maybe I'm, maybe not. I thought, I thought she was too. Mm -hmm. I can't remember that. I mean, I'm trying to jog my, you know, it's in your brain. It's just bouncing around. There, look, I'm going to tell you right now, my brain is hot. <laughs> express. It's like one of those little bouncy balls. Ding, yeah. ding, ding, <laughs> ding, ding. It'll get hemmed up in the corner in a minute. Uh, <laughs> so means tries to hold Melanie Gibb in contempt for not complying with the subpoena. He said he believes she evaded criminal prosecution in this case. I'm with okay. you there, Mark. He attacked, he attacked her from the get go. Remember the rat fling ship thing? Oh so, Yeah. yeah. Yep. Means asked for private and confidential access to Lori while she was in treatment. This was weird. Yeah. He he also asked to be directly involved in her care and to know proposed meds and plans to restore her competency before anything is given to her. That was weird. Okay. No, it's, it's weird. And from everything that I've looked up about stuff like this, there's not a lot because apparently this request doesn't happen very often. But, you know, the whole point is she's incompetent. She can't assist in her case. So you go do you for 180 days and let them try to restore your your client. I just have never heard of anybody saying, I want it cleared through me before you treat her. Yeah, I want to make sure of you're giving her ibuprofen and not Tylenol. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, June 24th, Vinelink lists Lori's location as another facility. And our listeners are awesome when they see something shooting it to us. Like, we get that all the time. Yeah. Oh, hey, I, did you see this? Did you see this filing? Yeah, I have to say Snoop Dogg, Eric, over on Twitter. He's, he's uh, me and Kresha both claim him as a big brother we never thought we needed. Uh, he's a great guy. He's always on top of this stuff. Go follow him, by the way. Breaking Crime with Big E on YouTube. Um, he's definitely, you know, said, hey, there's some filings. Go check them out. Yeah. yeah. And our listeners, too. You guys yep. are great. So in June, they set Chad's trial date for November 8th and said it would last six to eight weeks through December 17th of 2021, which we said what? Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. So in June, Means went to the prosecutor's office and was turned away. This was I love, this was funny. He asked for reimbursement of $4,346.06. And asked sanctions to be imposed on the state. Okay. He never got a confirmation he could come. Yeah. He woke up at 4 a.m. and sh- drove all that way and showed up. And they were like, we can't help you. And he threw a hissy fit. Yeah. What if it was like, uh, 
O.P. Taylor on when he was learning to throw hissy fits, stomping <laughs> his feet and laying down on the floor <laughs> and kicking. Yeah. So June 24th, Lori indicted. Lori was indicted for Charles's murder for one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Think I mean we talked about that. They almost got away with it. They they did. I mean, they said they had that case open, but when all this other stuff really hit their desks, that's when they're like, uh oh, I think we've been, you know, they've been had. They 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 were fooled. And yep. You know, um, and, and you think about Kay and Larry and Kresha and everybody who knew and Charles's boys. And I mean, how close it came that their dad was murdered and that murderer was going to get to walk away. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so on, Ju on June 28th, Lori turned 48 years old in jail. I don't. I just saw that because we had it on an episode the same day means files a motion to compel and list pretty much everybody who testified at the grand jury. He wanted all the communications documents, everything, but the kitchen sink pertaining to these people about what they talked about with investigators, emails, all that. And means filed a motion to show cause as to why Heather Daybell didn't comply with her subpoena. For those of you who don't remember, Heather Daybell is Chad's sister-in-law. And seems like really good people. Her and her husband yeah. both. Um, yeah. We always try to say just because somebody shares a last name with somebody who's bad, uh, we don't play that game where yeah, they oh, spoke out pretty quick. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So in July we got the big Chandler document dump. Yeah, I tell you we what. <laughs> when we saw this one little document dump, me and Fruit Loop were like, "This is exactly why." It's taken so long to get charges in Idaho because this, I mean, this, this wasn't even the kids, but we saw in, it was over a thousand pages. I believe that one was very long. You see what they have to weed through getting all these subpoenas for social media accounts, getting phone records, getting email accounts, and then you got to analyze it all. So that was a big eye opener for me when we got that first document dump that, man, these guys are covered up in yeah. this work. Yeah. So you're going to pick up what in August, right? Yeah. August 6th, um, Rob Wood and Lindsay Blake filed a, I put filet, <laughs> I got a typo, filed a notice of intent to seek death for Chad. And the filing says Chad exhibited utter disregard for human life and said he was a continuing threat to society. Amen. Around this time is when Archibald was put on Lori's case, much to, I'm sure, the disgust of Mark Means. They really, yeah. Really yeah. And though that it's it's uh, a, a little bit of a power power struggle between the two of them. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I think so. Mark Means just files stuff whenever he gets a wild hair, and you don't see Archibald on there hard, hardly ever. Yeah, because I, he knows... Means with their stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're not together on this, you can tell. Mm -hmm. So mid-August, Means files a motion to dismiss the grand jury indictment, saying her case was stayed due to her incompetency. He asked for a dismissal of the charges and sanctions to be placed on the state. So again, he, you know, wants sanctions. Lori and Chad are given separate case numbers, but they're still co-defendants. The reason is she couldn't, her hearings were stayed. Chad's were not. So August of this year, Chad waves his right to a speedy trial. Wouldn't you know, in the past month, they're whining he's been in jail so long that we can't wait for this date. Yeah, buddy, he's a murderer. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. um, August 30th, there was a status conference about her incompetency. And this is the hearing where Judge Boyce did not have the full report from the person treating Lori. So he extended the stay in her case on a temporary basis and wanted that report before he officially extended it. But we knew at that hearing, he was going to go ahead and go the 180 days. Um, so in September, that's when we saw the Daybell kids on 48 hours, which was eye opening in a lot of ways. Uh, they claimed their dad was framed. He would never hurt children. He would never do this. We've had a lot more evidence come out since then. And we said just recently, you know, you wonder at what point do these kids either just say he's framed and you're never going to get them to, you know, fancy any other scenarios or 
Maybe they do. All right. Pryor files a motion to sever the cases in September. And then September 8th is when Judge Boyce officially extends the stay in Lori's case for 180 days. That's going to take us till March of next year. So we'll see what happens at that status conference. I'm very, very curious. Um, Boyce obviously cancels Chad's trial date for November. October the 5th is when we have that change of venue hearing for Chad. And it was granted. Yep. Sometime around in there in October, we get the Gilbert document dump. We get the uh, Brandon, Boudreaux, all yep. those files. And October 15th, that is when the alleged homework call to the LDS attorney happened with Lori at the facility at the request of whoever was treating her. And that has caused a lot of, a lot of uh, nervousness in our listeners. So in November, Pryor files a motion for discovery about the phone call made by Lori to the LDS attorney. Interestingly enough, but not surprising, he calls her Ms. Vallow in this filing. So that tells me a lot. Uh, clearly, when your attorney is calling your wife, Ms. Vallow, I, I wonder if it's just because they didn't do the official paperwork to change that name. Um, I don't know, but... It, it always says a lot to me when he calls her Vallow. So he yep. also files for an evidentiary hearing um, about the alleged LDS lawyer phone call. He asks for a non-LDS special prosecutor to be assigned to this and wants to call Rob Wood, the lawyer whose last name was McConkie, and the employees in question to testify, and he wants them sequestered. He doesn't want anything sealed regarding this, though. And remember, Mark Means didn't want anything sealed either, although in the same breath, he said that she could have made incriminating statements about her case. So yeah, it was it's weird. confusing. Yeah. Like, why yeah. would you want that out there? If, if you're her lawyer and she's made statements about how things went down. Anyways, yeah. also in November, Lindsay Blake files a motion for the court to consider additional evidence and argument to reconsider transporting a jury. And they asked the jury come from Ada County and not move the whole trial to Ada County. Yep. I kind of thought that was smart. I did too. I mean, I understand that it's got to be out. Of, but if you can bring a jury in, I don't see how that's a bad thing. Because Rob Wood and Lindsey Blake raised great points about the challenges of having this trial in Ada County, which is it's winter. The weather, you know, it's just cold and icy and slippery and snowy up there. Yeah. The cost to transportation back and forth, housing, feeding these witnesses. And then they may have to come multiple times. But ultimately, it looks like the trial is going to go up to Ada. Yeah. So again, still in November, Means files a motion to show cause for contempt against Melanie Gibb. Here we go again. He got like sights on her. It's like he just... He does everything, and then he just read a, He just refiles. Yeah, he regurgitates uh, it. And yeah, means also files the Brady violation motion regarding Lori's call to the LDS lawyer. Uh, December a trial date is set for January 9, two thousand twenty three, and is expected to last ten weeks. That was a big. Oh my goodness! Right, right. We're gonna have to wait that long. Yeah, it's you know they're in jail. And I mean, yeah. Kay and Larry even, you know, seemed okay with it. I believe on an interview, they, they just, you know, they understand this is what happens. Yeah. And look, the way to look at it, this is still an active investigation. They may find things between now and then that could be crucial and beneficial to getting a conviction. Sure. And so, they're in jail. Right. They're not happy right now. No, they're not they eating bonbons. The, Santa don't come to the pokey. Hey, I think they get jelly on a peanut butter sandwich at Christmas. Oh, the big time. Actually, yeah. <laughs> the girl that I know that's a lifer in California sent me a very long email telling about how they celebrated Christmas. We'll do that on another episode, but it, it's... Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, you know, whatever. They just ship coal to, to Chad and Lori. Open up yeah. the box, coal. A big dump of it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So then the last thing, Means files a motion for Wood to be removed as prosecutor. Oh, here we go again. How many times? Yeah. Sanction. No, I don't know. Him. So he still misspells words though. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
if you copy and paste his filings into your documents so you can look at them as like red lines. Wow. Like, red line, red line, red line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But it's, you know, some of these things, I just try to pull things that we may have forgotten about. Now, some of the more recent stuff, but it kind of shows you throughout the year how the case is going. We're moving more towards getting to trial. For Chad, at least. I don't, Lori, I do not think we'll go in January of next year. I think they'll sever these cases. I think they got to at this point. And who knows when she'll go, but that's kind of what has happened all year. Yeah. And if it's severed, that just means people have to testify twice. Yeah. It's two different trials, twice, so. but we'll pretty much know what they got against her once Chad oh, yeah. goes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same case. So, yeah, it's just um, you get so caught up in things and, and you forget a lot's happened. And then you look back at those numbers at the very beginning of the episode that I gave you and, and you see we're, you know, getting into the second year of a lot of stuff, getting into a third year of a lot of stuff. I mean, it's going to yeah. be three years soon that Lori really connected with Chad. Yeah. Um, And then yeah. it all went downhill from there. So... There's been a lot of good specials put out. Dateline's done several. The ID discovery with Kay and Larry was great. I'm sure there'll be a few more of those this coming year. And goodness knows what else is going to pop up with this case. But as always, we will be watching it daily to make sure that we're bringing you the latest. And uh, yeah, so this is our main case, obviously. This is what brought us to this podcast. And so, um, you know, we're going to follow this one to the end. Yep. We will be there. All right, guys. Well, we're done with this one. So so, tomorrow is Gabby Petito. Yeah. So we're going to recap that case and yeah. just go through the main points. And, um, you know, if you guys have any questions about that case that you want us to answer, shoot them in the comment section. I'll, I'll check those out tomorrow and maybe pull some. And if you have any questions from this one, let us know. Maybe if we have an extra day at the end of the week or the weekend, we could just do some questions about, uh, things that we, we could even do it in a document, like on Facebook, if we don't have time trying to figure out how to get people's questions in better. And yeah. we also, you know, we're always open to suggestions of what you would want to see on the podcast that you're not seeing. You know, yeah. do you guys want like a news section where maybe the first five minutes we talk about just some cases that are in the news today? Something that's a little crazy out there. I saw where a, a bodybuilder in New Jersey shot his parents on Christmas Day. Just oh, nobody wow. knows yeah, uh, yeah. They were very powerful family. The family was really behind a lot of the New York skyline. The grandfather, he was mm. very instrumental in, in getting a lot of big buildings built. So I think they're going to call Royd rage. Cause he had veins popping out that like, I don't know. I was waiting for him to come out of his skin and dance. Around. It was gross. Ugh. I just can't like bodybuilders. Okay. If that's what you want to do with your body, that's cool. But it looks like a tiny person is trying to grow out of a big man's shoulders. I mean, really, look at a bodybuilder after I get done talking. Go look. Look like you got some little dude coming out of a big body. Yeah. And then the veins. This is like. It's uh -uh. the Hulk. By the way, my shirt. Okay. Two shirts that I bought in 94 when I saw Pink Floyd at Clemson. Found it in my shed. I'm a happy girl. It's got the dates on the back from when I went. Also, my daughter. Almost cried when I gave her tickets to see Roger Waters in Atlanta in August. If she's not in Ireland, oh, it just hit me. What? Is uh -oh. she <laughs> You'll have to FaceTime her in. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is a problem, y'all. Yeah. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, we will talk to you tomorrow talking about Gabby Petito, and we'll recap that for you. Have a good one.